Sometimes you read the paper and watch the news, and it seems like there's more bad news than good in the world. But you know what? It's just not true. I at least can hold on to something, that there's something, that, you know, maybe it's small, but there's something that I'm doing to make a difference. It's just a feeling that you have. You can help people. You have to. There's no alternative. Every child has potential that we just can't know. And so to my mind, that's what we're doing. We are saving potential for the future. Visionaries returns to the Crane Trust in Grand Island, Nebraska. A few years ago, we witnessed one of the greatest annual migrations in the world. 500,000 sandhill cranes descending on the Trust's 10,000 acres along the Platte River. It turns out that was just the beginning of the story. The Crane Trust has taken the idea of connecting people to the natural world to a whole new level. Tens of thousands of visitors now come year-round from across the globe to share the wonder of one of the last virgin prairies in the country. There they discover the marvel of an astoundingly diverse ecosystem that supports hundreds of species, from buffalo to rare butterflies. And of course, the greatest migration in North America, that of the Sandhill Crane. I saw the red sky warning I saw the new day dawning I saw the big bird lifting I saw the slow world shifting I went high I saw it all I went high When I first got to the Trust in 2010, it didn't take us long to figure out that in order for people to, to love this the way we love it, is we had to get them here. The flowers and the insects and the birds that are here is just an in incredible experience all year round. The fact that you can bike next to a herd of genetically pure bison and that you can kayak down the Platte River, that's also home to the largest sandhill crane roost in the world. It's, it's one thing to, to have an attachment to those areas and recognize the importance of those areas, but it's an incredible thing to come out and touch those areas and experience those areas. I'm a lifelong Nebraskan. I grew up here and I didn't know a place like this existed until about five years ago. You know, in our culture today, we spend an awful lot of time in front of screens and what the Crane Trust and the other organizations out here do is offer people a chance to have an intimate relationship with wildlife. Children need nature for their spiritual development and their psychological development, and adults too. So, you know, anything that the Crane Trust does to bring alive the magic for the local people so that they love it, so they're proud of it, People think of this as uh, uh, the, where the cranes are. Well, the cranes are only here part of the year, but the habitat and the other creatures that exist here year-round are part of the focus that the Crane Trust has evolved into taking care of. You come and you start to see how all those different pieces of the system fit together here, and then you go to another location and you're, you're looking for those connections. Uh, and I think that's a key part of the educational process here. Those open spaces that uh, once people experience them and, and get out of their comfort zone and get out here, it can be a place that really uh, has a strong draw for people. The bison um, are a great attraction. Everybody wants to see bison back on the prairie where they haven't been, you know, in hundreds of years. And, and now, you know, they're fascinated to drive by and, and look what's out here. And we're fascinated to see the ecological impacts of the bison on the prairie. So it's a win-win for all of us. I think the staff that's here and the expertise that they have, they're well-regarded 
locally, but they're also well regarded regionally and nationally for the work that they do. And Andy Caven, our lead biologist, is, is monitoring the plants and how the plants are changing because we've reintroduced bison. And so I'm taking you through this now to show you a couple of interesting plants. This one right here on the way in, we're at it. This is a called prairie gentian. This one's pretty phenomenal. I think one of the things, highlights of, of anybody's trip out here is going to be the talking to the, to the staff. As part of these excursions is we cook out at night. We'll grill them their food, sit out by a fire, and our biologists like Andy and, and Bryce, our, our vice president of operations, they're going to be around and you're going to get to see firsthand why this is a special place because these people love this like it's their own and a scientist frequently does intensely interesting stuff, but you have to be able to communicate that in such a way that a common person can understand that and relate to why it's important to them. The reason it's here is because this land has been kept in conservation land and has been managed uh, to give it an opportunity to grow. So it's really exciting for us to see if we can't, uh, through our monitoring, uh, study the effects of having the bison back on the prairie. Uh, through their grazing practices and, and just see the different statures of uh, species diversity that may come back or may thrive with them, uh, with their presence. We're just entering the rut, which is the breeding season, and we're at the end of calving, so there's young calves around, the mothers are still very protective. The females, they use a lot of vocal communications and in a big herd can find their calf based on grunting. They'll grunt back and forth and we'll be able to show a long-term study, five, 10 years, of exactly what happens when you bring back the dominant species, the herd of bison that weren't, haven't been here for 150 years. I saw the braided veins of rivers. I saw the burdens they deliver. I saw all the silent neighbors. I saw the fields cry out for labor. I saw the sky It's a, that's the main channel of the Platte River. It's a braided river, you can see the sandbars. We're on Mormon Island. Uh, it's an island because it's surrounded by the channels of the Platte River. This was used by the Mormon wagon train in the late 1800s. Brigham Young came through here numerous times. There's a famous uh, scientist, E.O. Wilson, who talked a lot about island biogeography. And at this point, these prairies are islands in a sea of agriculture. Mormon Island is, is native prairie, it's historic prairie. It's never been tilled. There's very, very few pieces like this left in the world. And this is seven, eight miles of the biggest intact chunk left of wet meadow and tall grass prairie along the big bend of the Platte River. So we're on a patch of the Crane Trust property where the bison are grazing currently. This is where the majority of our regal fritillaries live. They summer here, winter here, and have their eggs laid here. So the number one thing the regals need are violets. That's what they eat as caterpillars. And those go away when you till the land. Because this is native prairie, because it's, it's never been tilled, because we still have the grasses and the flowers and all the different plant species that were here 300 years ago. This is a, an alive ecosystem. It's a living ecosystem that we let people interact with. And it holds some really fascinating biodiversity in terms of bird life, in terms of insect life, butterflies, uh, and in terms of plants. It's about 2,200 acres of probably what was once 10,000 acres of this island. The rest of it has all been developed. As you can see, kind of a, a kind of mosaic of shrubs and trees and grasslands. But if you were able to see right through to over there, you would see that there's a pretty big housing development called Amic Acres. The trust controls the north side for seven miles. Uh, and this is all native prairie. Now, if you go about 100 yards to my right, that isn't true. I mean, it's mostly corn, but there's a housing development over there that would have come right up to the river had the trust not have gotten a conservation easement for about the first two miles here. Conservation easements are a way to, to uh, gain property without buying it. So we say, okay, we will pay you this sum to make sure you don't build anymore or till it or mine it. The trust will ask the, the farmer or the rancher or the, or the landowner, don't build on it. Don't mine it. 
Other than that, you can farm it, you can play on it, you can hunt it, you can use it as it's been used for the last 300 years. Just don't develop it. Because when you develop it, you're going to affect everything that's around it, and what's around it is, is Mormon Island. And what the landowner benefits is that there's a fee attached to it. And depending on, on the land, that fee can be up to 20% of the value of the land. The trust manages through conservation easements or owns over 10,000 acres that we can protect. But the next five miles are unprotected. And there's nothing to stop a, a gravel pit, a housing development, or anything else to come in and, and move into that. And when population moves in, when, when land is developed this close to a native prairie, it has an effect on the creatures, on the species that live here. It has to. If this were to be turned into a parking lot, you would eliminate uh, 440 minimally species of plants, habitat for 220 species of birds, innumerable insects. And so that becomes extremely important for us uh, to expand around this prairie to protect it because we have the largest crane roost in the world. Well, we had a, a, a surprise uh, earlier this year, a piece of property right across the street from our nature center. Went up for sale. It was a cornfield. A group bought it and created a gravel pit. And, and they're in the process of removing the topsoil and, and start mining for gravel. And, and that can't ever be put back. In order to accomplish our mission, we need to introduce people to the prairie. We need to introduce people to the ecosystem. The excursions are a vessel by which we do that. It is the means by which we introduce people to what we have here. We have the fat bikes for those who want to ride across the prairie. We have the kayaking uh, if they want to get into the river and they want to experience the ecology of the river. If they're more uh, interested in being in photography, we have photography hikes that they can go on. All of this exists here at the Crane Trust year round. What we want to do with the, with the fat bikes, with the kayaks, with the staying in the cabins, is really give our friends of the trust an opportunity to immerse themselves in the habitat. It's really our goal to bring people out to the trust, to introduce people uh, to the prairie who wouldn't normally come and see these type of experiences. As we go to open the doors to bring people in, um, we're trying to get as many people as we can out here, but we're balancing that with our land and science management, trying to find that you know, perfect collaboration that brings the best out of everything. So this is one of three cabins that we have on property. Uh, these are where our guests will come and stay when they, when they have their experience. If I'm talking to a civic group locally uh, about tourism and then about the cranes, uh, I'll say this to them, I'll say, you live in an exotic place. And they look at you real funny, and you'll say, no, you really do live in an exotic place. Most of the world doesn't look like this. And I'll put pictures on the screen of the cranes, and it looks like something maybe from the Serengeti of Africa. And I'll say, this was photographed 15 minutes from where you're sitting. And it is special. When they come here and they experience um, this ecosystem, they go home and they tell their friends about it. They tell their family about it. They talk about it for the rest of their lives. This ecosystem, the prairie, it's impossible to walk away from this place not feeling touched by it. I've had so many people tell me that it's just a beautiful, phenomenal experience to undertake and um, they recommend it to everybody regardless of whether or not you're a nature lover or not. It's just an amazing thing for everybody to experience. I saw the red sky warning I saw the new day dawning I saw the big bird lifting I saw the slow world shifting I went I saw the sky unfurl. I saw the.